What's up gamers, it's time for the sandbox news. This week they added the character customization menu. We can finally choose our outfits. This isn't finished, but right now we can change our skin color and hair. It looks like the hair color is actually bugged right now. Uh, I don't know why it's so shiny. And I can choose a hat. It looks like right now choosing a hat overrides the hair. There's also footwear options, bottoms, and tops. There's no icons for these yet, and there's no visual indicator on what item you have selected. I'm sure this will be improved in the future. It is functional in-game though. I can click save changes and it'll appear in the menu. And currently I believe you have to rejoin the server to get your outfit to change. Yeah, now I'm wearing the different clothes. It's up to the individual game modes to decide if they want to use these clothes or not. Game modes and servers don't even have to use this player model, they can use whatever model they want. Let's take a look at the construct updates. So they added this new building, but it's missing the textures on the windows. So we have this missing texture red outline. They've been working on new tree models, I believe this is the new model. It's still work in progress, it doesn't have collisions yet so you can walk right through it. And I don't think they've actually fixed the trees lowering your frame rate issue yet. So if I come over here, my frame rate still takes a big dip. Last week we saw the new blend shader that they were working on. And it looks like it's here in game. If you look closely, you can actually see slightly different shades of grass. But you can actually blend in different colors of grass or any other material. For example, you could have a multicolored brick that you can paint in the level editor. Other than that, they've been working on new props. They've been working on a ticket machine, but it doesn't look like that's made its way into the game yet. Over here we can see they added some benches. This is pretty wild. I feel like these benches look a little small. Yeah, they definitely are small. It's all work in progress. Just like these weapon hold animations, the pistol hold animation actually got an update. Now the pistol has a one-handed hold animation. You can toggle it, you can switch which hand you're using, you can switch between left hand, right hand, or both hands when you're coding your weapon. It looks like right now only the tool gun has a different animation. All these other tools have the same default two-handed pistol animation. Oh, it looks like the ticket machine is actually in the spawn menu, so we can take a quick peek at these. These are going to be ticket machines, I assume, for the parking garage over there. They're pretty detailed. You can actually read the text on it. Wait for barrier. Please take a ticket. Pay at ticket machine and collect chip coin to exit the car park. Take your valuables with you. Thieves are operating in this area using Bluetooth location devices. That's pretty scary. Oh, here we can see... Wow, the text is really clear. Here's the other machine, pay for parking here, and you can see the computer. It's very realistic. This is wild. So much detail. Very immersive. It looks like there's a metal fence model too. This is crazy. And there is a couple pieces of garbage. These are wild. Oh my goodness. Oh, what? It got bent? Do all of these have damaged variations? No way. Oh, the physics bugged out here. Uh, I guess that's just a, whoa. I guess it's just a feature right now. Also, the developer console has been updated. It looks like I can see a list of all the entities here. It doesn't seem to do anything when I click on it, but as we can see in this clip that Gary showed off, we'll be able to click on the entities and it looks like it'll show debug information. What else is insane is the new updates to the RTS game mode. It actually got a new icon in the game mode browser. I'll load up Greenlands. This map had a ton of improvements. So this is Greenlands, the map for the RTS game mode. It's actually really laggy because you're supposed to look at it from a top-down perspective and the map is not optimized for looking at it like this. Especially with the buggy trees that lag your game. Here we can see it's been getting an art pass. 
The ground here looks really shiny, it's pretty cool. Although the scale on these materials are definitely not right for when you're just walking around in sandbox mode, but that's not what this map is designed for, it's a RTS map. Here we can see the new five-way blend shader in action with a ton of different materials and colors painted in here. There is stone and some weird orange particle effects. I'm not entirely sure what those are. This is insane. This water is so realistic. Well, this is very realistic. It's like I'm actually in a Greenlands. Now it's time to actually go in the RTS game mode and check out the new updates. They added indicators to show where your units are walking. It doesn't show their exact path and it looks like it doesn't show queued paths either. But this is very useful for now. This game mode has been getting a lot of balance changes. Now it looks like the assault unit is a default unit that you can build in addition to the grunt. So you no longer have to research it. It looks like the research abilities for the specific unit types have been moved from the research lab to the individual buildings. So it looks like the Hellfire is actually a helicopter that sprays fire on the ground. It doesn't seem to go very fast. I think there's a debug key somewhere on my keyboard that I can use to spawn enemy units. Oh, I wonder what those yellow lines are for. That's insane. Well, that's it. Like, comment, and subscribe.